Welcome to Visual Basic. This is going to be a this is going to be a resource access for you on just how to insert images into Visual Basics resources. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to just I'm going to use baseball. I'm a big baseball guy, so I'm just going to use baseball. Just Im image put in a couple of images, and we'll just switch back and forth between these. Hopefully, you've done this in class by now, but I thought it'd be good to have a resource just for getting images into your projects, as we will do this in most of our projects. So. I have taken the liberty of already finding a page with some baseball logos on. I'm just going to use two of these. For that, I'm going to use one of my favorites, the snipping tool, which is available. You can search for it down on Windows. If we go snipping tool, there's my app. Of course, I have mine open. I'm going to create a new app. And I am just, or not a new app, but a new project, a new image for it. And I'm going to choose Cubs and White Sox for this since we're regionally located near there. I'm going to File, Save As, and you will see on my desktop I have a VB folder right here. Uh, you, would, you would be putting this into, and you can see that I've already started my project here, inserting images into VB. You, of course, would have this on your iDrive or eventually on maybe your home computer and you would you would submit this um, we'll talk about that as need be in the in the event that we are completely uh, e-learning environment so I'm gonna put this in here and I'm gonna give it a good name when you use snipping tool it's gonna name things capture because we captured that image bad name uh, the key to this is it's a PNG that's wonderful for Visual Basic and the next key is we want to uh, let me get into this folder we want to name that something appropriate and simple. I don't want numeric characters. I don't want anything, you know, apostrophes. I don't want spaces. Visual Basic is just picky about that. I'm just going to make call this Cubs. Now, I could call it Cubs 1, Cubs 2, Cubs 3, Cubs 4 if I have multiple Cubs pic pictures, but do not start with a number. Uh, Visual Basic is much more picky. You get some convoluted file name for this and you may have troubles with it in the program so let's keep it simple so I'm going to save that one and then I'm going to go new and here's our white socks down here I'm going to take that one I will again file save as and I will just name that one White socks. Notice I didn't put a space between the white and the socks. It's, uh, Visual Basic is not going to like that space is there or that space in there. So I'm going to save that. And now those are in my file folder. So at that point, I'm going to go back to here. And to get those into our images, I want to go to Project up here, top left hand corner, Project. Inserting, huh, I didn't put a G at the end of that. Oh well, inserting images in VB project. That's just the name of mine. It will it will not say inserting images if that's not the name of yours. If yours is called dogs, yours is about dogs. This would and that was your file name. This would just say dogs properties. But it's at the bottom, and I go there and I get a lot of options on here. And we're going to insert those into our resources. So we go from project to the bottom option on there to resources and we got a number of different resources and here's our choices for resources strings which are just groups of words images icons audio a lot of things we can do but we, we're going to use images primarily for the purpose of this course here so I'm going to go images and now there are none in there I go to add source the drop add resource the drop down over here allows me to add an existing file which I just created. So I'm going to go to there. I'm going to search onto my desktop. You'd be searching your iDrive or wherever you put this on your home computer. I saved these just moments ago in my VB folder in inserting images in VB. I open that guy and I can select both of these if I hold down shift or if there's multiples of them hold down shift and just select them all I open those they are in there and you should notice they are over here as well we've got resources over here put Cubs PNG it's got White Sox PNG there and they're in there and they're ready to go let me show you what we could do with these I'm gonna grab a picture box put 
one of those on here. And I'm just going to name this appropriately lowercase pic um, team because I'm going to actually put the Cubs one and the Sox one. And maybe I want to put all of them. You know, maybe this is a bigger project. I want to do all of them. And now there's all of these properties over here about the picture box that we can play around with. And to be perfectly honest, I don't know what, new, what many of these do, but there are two really common things we do. Commonly, we might assign an image to it. And you will see if I go down here and hit image, if I click here, it gives me the, the option of putting these in. And I'm actually not going to put one of those in here, but I could pick one of those to be in there. The other one, the other property that I commonly use is this size mode, normal sizing, stretch image, auto size, and center image. And those are, those are the primary ones I ever use for picture box. Now, I believe that's Visual Basics plan for you, that those would be the two most common things you would do, because if you see this little tiny arrow right here, if I click on it, it gives me a choice to choose an image, where we just were, or to go to size mode. And then I guess dock in parent container, and to be, to be honest with you, I haven't used it. So size mode oftentimes will, will pick stretch image. What stretch image does, it takes whatever image you have and makes it fit in the picture box the size you had it. And I'll show you what, the pro what a problem is for that. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and pick stretch image. Now let's say that we had... I'm going to leave it like this, then I'll come back and I'll try to remember to show you the problem with that. Okay, and then I'm going to pick, uh, to, to display the Cubs or the White Sox images, I'm going to pick, op um, excuse me, I'm going to pick radio buttons. Actually, I'll delete that one for now. Uh, make it easier for you to view here. I'm going to increase the font size. Again, you don't have to do this, but because this is a video and I want you want it to be pretty clear what's going on with this. I'm going to increase the font size. I'm going to change the, t the text of this one to Cubs. So when I click it, I'm going to expect the Cubs button to come on. and I'm going to change its name to RAD. That's our three-letter lowercase naming convention for radio buttons. Cubs. Okay. I'm going to control C, control V. I'm going to change this one to RAD white socks, capital white, capital W, capital S, but lowercase RADs, and I'm going to change its text to white space socks. And the theory is when I click Cubs, the Cubs video will show here. When I click White Sox, the White Sox will, will show here. But if I run this now, nothing's going to happen because I haven't told those things to happen yet. So let's just make some nice space here. We can see a big image. Maybe it'll be foggy. But I'm going to double click my Cubs radio button. And in here, I've got radio button Cubs check change. When it's check property changes, this is going to fire. And what I want to have happen is I want my picture box pick team. I want to change its image to my dot resources dot and you will see that I have Cubs as an option there because I've loaded it. If I hadn't loaded it, of course, Cubs isn't going to be there. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to my form, double click White Sox, and I can actually copy and paste that part because I want exactly that in here. And I go White Sox. If I run this now, you will notice that one of the radio buttons is going to want to be checked right from the beginning. And I thought it might be a little fuzzy blowing it up that much. But you get the feel for that. And I click to White Sox, and I've got it. You won't always use radio buttons with, with these. Sometimes you'll just preset the image just to be, just to be like... In this case, I might preset my image just to be Cubs. It might just, you know, this just might always have a picture of Cubs on here. Um, but this, this just got a chance. We got a chance to talk about radio buttons. Now, the stretch image. I want to show you the problem with the stretch image. If I run this, it's going to squeeze or distort our picture a little bit. 
Um, but I'm also going to show you the problem with not using stretch image. Let's say we had, close this, let's say we had this box like this and I just put um, size mode normal. Let's try this. We start this and we only see part of the picture. Or if I start this, set this really big, notice I am still on size mode normal and I run this. Well, it doesn't use up the whole space. So you have to be the judge of what's best. If you have a picture that you want to put in there that is that is not square, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to just kind of work with with your image or your picture box to get it kind of in a similar dimension. You'll have to play around with that just a little bit. So anyway, the most important thing about this, um, you got a little one, you got a little review of radio buttons, but two, the purpose of this one is really just for how we get images into our into our visual basic into our resources so good luck let me know if i can help you with anything